Huntsman Clan, what is going on guys? It's January, we're in the late season now, we're chasing big, beautiful, monster whitetail bucks. And today I thought I would share with you guys my secret weapon, what I've been using all season long, and that is gonna be this bad boy right here. This is a custom made recurve from Black Widow Bows. We're gonna be going pretty rapid fire on this thing. We're gonna be going from tip to tip, just like uh, Future Huntsman Clan, you guys know I need you guys to like, comment, and subscribe, so I'm gonna make you guys a deal. If I 10 ring this elk right here, you gotta hit that bell notification, subscribe, and leave your ideas and comments down below so that I can see them. <laughs> All right guys, let's run over this bad boy real quick. So, this is Black Widow Recurve. It is a PSA three-piece takedown. That is where you see these bronze hex keys right here. The reason I chose three-piece is because if you ever have to travel, um, it is so much easier than a one-piece bow. Also, because this is my only personal bow that I actually own, it's the first bow that I had custom made, I wanna be able to take it with me everywhere and I don't have a lot of options. Um, if you do have a ton of bows, sky's the limit, man. I think as long as you have a couple of breakdowns that you can take, um, with you traveling, flying in a boat, whatever, um, you know, I think that I think you're good to go. Now, moving on from that, we're gonna move up to the tips. So here, Black Widow's done something awesome. They have reinforced their tips with glass. So we've got these really big, thick tips up here <laughs> that taper down onto a thinner limb. And basically having reinforced tips really allows us to have a lot of strength there for the contact points of the string, which is where all of the stress in the bow is. So, that's what we got up at the tips. Now, moving down from the tips, we've got stick tamers. I'll come over there and show you guys these. These are really cool. I just started using these. They come from Black Widow. You can buy them at a few other places too. But basically, all they are is they're just this piece of foam here, and it's got some adhesive on the back side of it, and essentially it's got some instructions, and you set it to where it'll hit your bowstring whenever you have the correct brace height. So it's not too deep like this. This would be too compressed and it's not out above it because then it wouldn't be useful when you shoot, it's just touching it. That way, whenever you shoot your bow, um, the string will contact it and it really silences things down. Now, um, because we're going rapid fire, we're gonna move right along. Down here, we've got puff balls and we have these little um, spider things or like these little plastic spiders. They come from Black Widow. They're supposed to be string silencers. I prefer the puff balls. I think they do a better job, but you know, I mean, get a new bow, you gotta go with the look, right? So they are cool. Moving down into the actual limb, you guys are gonna see this beautiful wood grain. Now this is black and white ebony. I chose to do that throughout the entire bow and I have to tell you, I'm ecstatic about it. You can hide behind it. Um, it works really good to give you a little bit of breakup whenever you're really close to big game been within you know uh, 10 yards of monster bucks a few times this season was able to hide behind this thing and uh, and really helps out moving down from there we have one of my favorite things that's on here it's a big white tail buck black widow does these really cool things where you're able to get custom engravings and this was one of their options on there i've been white tail hunting since i was four started bow hunting uh, with a compound when I was nine and then switched to traditional when I was 13. So, I mean, whitetail are really just ingrained in, in who I am as a hunter and an outdoorsman. And uh, I absolutely love that they were able to do this. They make a couple of different inlays. If you end up looking at a widow bow to do custom, highly recommend checking that out. From there, we've got the riser, right? The big beefy boy portion of this bow. And the thing that I love, love, love about risers of this kind is they are dead in the hand when you shoot them. So a lot of bows, this is true of compounds as well, um, you know, a lot of stick bows, especially long bows, they have a light riser um, or they're just unwieldy in the wind or both, you know, it could be both. So this thing, the advantage is, is when you're in heavy wind, you don't have a ton of sway because you kind of got a dead stick in your hand, so to speak, I know. I'm probably gonna get some, some flack for that because they're all dead sticks, right? But, but it's really dead in the hand, meaning that it doesn't shift around a lot. You don't have a whole lot of wobble. Um, it's pretty easy to hold steady. And when you release the bow, because this riser is so dense, you don't have a lot of buck. The bow doesn't jump as soon as you release it. That's a huge advantage to me. Um, you know, I've shot some A&H longbows. I hunted with that for a long time. Uh, great bows, phenomenal. Killed quite a few animals with it, but compared to this riser, it's just, it just doesn't compete. This thing is top notch. So moving on from there, we got the bottom limb. We have a quote that I am a huge fan of. It is nerves of steel. And 
I honestly, you know, I, I thought really long and hard about what to put on this on this bow. And at the end of the day, calm under pressure is always best. And so I felt like Nerves of Steel was really fitting because I know that there's going to be a point in time, there already has been a couple this season, where I am freaking out. Even if it's a doe, sometimes I still just freak out, right? That's why we do it, right? That's why we love what we do and, and we love to hunt. But having this quote on here and then imagining a, a, a pond of water that's slowly calming, I can usually get my heart rate down to like at least under 120, so that way maybe I can make a good shot. Lastly, this is a PSA takedown, and the question that everybody has been wanting to know, how long is it? Well, it's 60 inches. Uh, damn. Uh, there, there are longer bows, right? And there are shorter bows, but really it's how you use your bow. That's really, that's really what's going to determine how efficient you are, you know, how, uh, how effective you are in the field, so to speak. But in all seriousness, the length of the bow does matter. Um, you know, the longer the bow you have, um, once you start getting, you know, 62, 64, 66 inches and up, you start having some problems shooting out of pop-ups, uh, you know, uh, box blinds, pit trap blinds, stuff like that. You just, you have to have more area in order to be able to shoot because your, your bow is so long. Now on the flip side of that, when you start getting really short, specifically with traditional bows, you get finger pinch. So that's where essentially the angle of the string is so acute that you can't get a proper release anymore. And for me, you know, I'm 5'8", so I have a 27 inch draw length, maybe a hair over that. Uh, 60 inches works really good. I, I do think that the next time that I, that I get a new set of limbs, which I'm hoping to do this next year, is I think I'm going to get 62 inch limbs and I'm going to up the weight a little bit. Right now we're at 61 pounds at a 27 inch draw length going to shoot for something closer to 70 um, just because we've got some really big trips planned and I'm hoping to take you guys on but we got some really big game animals and I want to make sure that there's enough power there to really get the arrow through. Um, speaking of arrows we'll talk about those real quick. Now the arrows that I'm using I'm shooting two kinds on the left here I have a wood arrow that is rated for 65 to 70 pounds and on the right I have a 350 spine Black Eagle carbon shaft. Now both of these arrows are going to be using 175s on the tips. So right here you can see that's a 175 grain field point and no different from my carbon arrow. It's also got a 50 grain uh, bronze insert in it. And then you know you have uh, you have your fletchings and you also have uh, knocks which are going to be somewhere 18 to 20 grains. In total on the right we've got a 530 grain carbon arrow which I prefer to use for distance shooting. Um, and then on the left, we've got a 655 grain wood arrow, and that thing hits like a lance when it lands. Both of them work great. I've killed deer with both this season. Headed out dad hunting, going to be taking the carbon arrow just because of aerodynamics, and I'm expecting there to be a lot of wind in the canyon, um, but I absolutely love the wood shafts. They're, they're pretty cool. And they're also a little quieter to shoot, which is a, which is a big advantage. So the last thing, moving to the end of the bow, we've got another puffball, another little spider thing, another stick tamer, no different than we have on the top. But my most recommended item is going to be this little rubber tip. Now, what this is for is you know when you're spotting and stalking that you're going to be, you know, leaning on your bow, you're gonna be putting it in rocks, hitting it on the ground, all kinds of stuff. Boys, put a rubber on the end of that thing, all right? Protect yourself, okay? Protect your bow. It's worth it. It deserves protection. All right, you always want to make sure that everything is in working order. You don't want any cracks. You don't want to mess anything up, any discolorations, anything like that, right? Keep yourselves protected.